Hi guys, what's up? So last week I launched Flexer, which is an open source flexible PCB actuator. In this week's video, I'm going to explain why I'm selling it. I'm also going to go through every technical decision that I made and how I managed to sell it for just two euros. So let's start with a proper introduction. As you may or may not know, a couple of years ago, I had this weird idea of putting a coil on a flexible PCB to try and make a magnetic actuator out of it. The idea ended up working and since then I've been using these actuators to make speakers, motors, POV displays and even robots. All these projects are open source so that you can also make them and see the benefit of this technology. But even though it's open source there's a slight hiccup because not everyone can afford these flexible PCBs. The cheapest price you can get a flexible PCB is $107 without the shipping. But the more PCBs you order the cheaper they get. In fact, in September 2018, I designed this small flexible actuator and decided to order 288 PCBs to sell it until the 4699. This way I could make this technology a little more accessible, but a couple of months ago it ran out of stock and I didn't bother restocking because since then design has improved. I also wanted to try and make it cheaper, so what I'm going to do now is show you every decision and every step that I took to try and get my new actuator at a super cheap price. I used PCBWay's online calculator to build this graph and show how the prices vary with the quantities and there seems to be a significant drop when we exceed 3500 PCBs. This probably depends on how many PCBs they can fit into one panel, in fact the price also vary with the dimension of the board. After playing around with the parameters I decided to make the PCB 47 by 17 mm long. This was quite an improvement from my previous model because the longer the PCB the flappier the coil gets. To maximize the flappiness, I also reduced the width as much as possible. The coil's area was also reduced by lowering the pitch from 5mm to 4mm. And this is the final design. There was just one problem I have to solve. I needed to give it a new name because flexible PCB actuator was not that catchy. So after a couple of geeky name ideas, I decided to go with Flexar, which stands for Flexible Actuators or Flexible Actuated Robotics. I'm still not sure which abbreviation is best. I went through the same pricing exercise with the new dimensions and this time the graph had a completely different shape because at 500 PCBs it immediately dropped to 52 cents and that's quite an improvement. Before ordering any high quantities I decided to get some prototypes to verify that everything is okay. And I was super happy with the design because the stiffness was reduced a lot when compared to my other design. This reduction in stiffness intensified the actuator's flapping stroke and their different motions were observed better when using smaller magnets. The new coil also had a slightly larger resistance which overall made it heat up less when applying a 5V steady voltage. The only thing that bothered me about this flexible PCB was the silk screen. It wasn't consistent. I emailed PCBWay about this to check if they can make two silk screen passes instead of one and they agreed to do it without any extra cost. So I got a second batch of prototypes to verify this extra step and that made the quality of the PCB look so much better. This made me confident to go ahead with the big order and after studying the costs involved and setting a target price, I convinced myself to order 3000 PCBs. Okay, so I'm about to order 3000 PCBs. That's crazy and scary. So I'm double checking all the parameters so that I'm sure I get this right. Okay, I think it's okay. Let's do this. And what happens when you order 3000 PCBs? You receive them in a box like this one. It seems that they have split up in small bags to separate the quantities. So my first job is going to be to verify that I actually have 3000 PCBs. And we're going to do that by using a scale. So one PCB weights 0 0.066 grams. 
Here we should have 200 PCBs. So if we make 12.9 division by 0 0.066 grams, we should have around 200 PCBs. Pause for a second, I found one that was actually banded. So we have to write a minus one. I added all the numbers and the result is 3132 PCBs. So they must have sent me a couple of extras. Something very important that I noticed is that the coils resistance varied between batches. This is something that I never figured before, so if someday I get to purchase a second door there, I will talk to PCBWay to see if you can narrow this tolerance down. So here I took a distribution of around 500 PCBs and the mean ended up being around 20 ohms. The maximum resistance I got is 23.3 ohms, while the minimum resistance is 18.9. To help me measure each actuator, I designed and milled this tester PCB, which basically ensures that the resistance is within tolerance. So before I ship, I will pass the actuator through this test to make sure that the coil isn't damaged. Now given that I'm going to sell open source hardware, I feel that I have the obligation to the community to be completely honest about the price. And that's what this next part is going to be about. We initially estimated that each PCB will cost me around 32 cents to make. Now including a special PCB weight discount, the duty charges and the shipping, we reached around the same price. Now there are some other expenses that we need to consider before we confirm our price. One of them is the shipping. We cannot take our flexible PCB, put it in an envelope and ship it, because first of all that's not that professional. And the second thing is that the parcel can bend and damage our actuator. So to prevent this from happening, I came with the idea of using a business card as sort of a backplate to prevent the flexible PCB from bending. I was going to use some double sided tape underneath the coil to connect the two together, but when peeling it the coil started getting curvy. A simpler solution was to just tape the top part of the actuator. These business cards end up costing 4 cents each. This brings the price of our goods to around 31 cents. Now unfortunately there are some other things that we need to consider when selling online, like the PayPal fees. Yes, the PayPal fee end up costing more than the actual product. And it's also wise to take around 7% of the total cost and add them as expenses, so that this money will cover any items that get lost during shipment, or any PCBs that are damaged. So basically the expenses added up to 83 cents, so if I sell this actuator at 2 euros, I will make around 1 euro and 17 cents in profit. This is around a 2.4 markup, which is the recommended minimum profit needed for a hardware business to be sustainable. Mr. AV blog made a whole complete video explaining all this economical information, which is where I got these numbers from, so I highly recommend you check it out. Now the main reason I managed to do it at this price tag is because it doesn't have any onboard electronics. Once you start adding an HBridge driver or maybe a microcontroller, the price starts increasing because you don't only need to add the components cost but also the price for the PCB assembly and testing and that's a whole complete different level. But as a maker I think this non-electronics version gives you more freedom because you're not limited to use it as an actuator. I would love to hear your feedback on Flex, are both positive or negative, so leave it down in the comments below. The last thing I would like to announce before I end this video is that I opened a Teespring store, so if you would like to help me make more projects you can buy cool t-shirts like this one. See you in the next video guys.